Okay, hello everybody. This is uh, Rachel speaking. I'm going to do a demonstration of Cohen's Kappa on SPSS. So this is a new statistic for people to learn. What we're doing here is providing a measure of adjusted agreement between two raters or ratings for a binary outcome. And you'll see that this complicate, uh, oh, this complements your learning on the foundation strands in year one because it's often used in professional settings. So the test statistic here is uh, Cohen's Kappa and we're looking here to provide inter-rater reliability. It's the term used to see the extent to which independent coders evaluate and reach the same conclusion taking chance into account. We've already looked at Cronbach's alpha as a measure of reliability, and this looks at the items on a scale. With Cohen's kappa, what we're doing here is looking at our raters as variables. So we'll have rater one and rater two, and we're looking to see about the agreement between those two raters. So, it will all become clear when I show you an example. In this example, uh, GPs refer patients with anxiety or depression to a mental health service. Then what happens is the referrals are reviewed alongside a case history by mental health professionals. And these professionals, they then determine whether the person is best suited to low or high intensity psychological intervention. So this is what we mean by a binary outcome. The raters will decide whether somebody is suited to low or high intervention. And just a little bit about what those might be. Um, low intensity uh, psychological interventions, uh, they use uh, less resources in terms of healthcare time, and they may include some kind of guided self-help, often through technology, um, so it can be done remotely, and often based on principles of CBT. For high intensity intervention, it may include medication. So remember here, we're looking at people with anxiety or depression, they may be assessed by some kind of psychiatric service and be uh, prescribed some kind of pharmaceutical, psychopharmacological approach. It may also have more direct intervention uh, with a medical or healthcare professional. For example, they may have some talk therapy, one-to-one, face-to-face, -face, e.g. psychodynamic therapy. Okay, so we're looking here how to judge ratings for a binary outcome. In this particular example, the mental health service, they want to check that all professionals are judging referrals in the same way, i.e. it shouldn't matter whether you get re reviewed by person A or person B, or rater A, rater B, the outcome should be the same. Um, so, in order to check that people are reviewing in the same way. Two professionals review the same 30 files and they make their decision. They're either going to decide for each file whether they're low or high intensity. Okay, so um, this is the exciting part. We're going to have a look at some data. Woohoo! Where's SPSS? Let's get my file. Okay, so here is the uh, data file that I'm going to use to show you how to calculate the Cohen's Kappa statistic. We can see here we've got uh, the ratings from Rater 1 and the ratings from Rater 2. We've got our 30 case histories and referrals here. And you can see, for example, for Person 1, Rater 1, um, gave a 1 and rate 2 gave a 1. So there's agreement there. We need to um, just show you how this was coded, a couple of different ways of looking at your 
uh, values. You might be familiar with going into variable view down the bottom here. And you can see under values, if you just click, the little blue comes up and you can see that a one has been assigned to the recommendation for low intensity and a two has been assigned for high intensity. Okay. Um, obviously these raters are rating the same people on the same criteria so they must be coded the same. So back into uh, data view I'll just show you the other way of looking at your labels. You can go to view labels. Yay, there we are. Um, so you can see that it looks like fairly high agreement and we can see that there are some cases where they have been reviewed differently by these two different raters. So when we do the Kappa statistic, the raters themselves are our variables and we're looking to see if their ratings of the same person or case history as it is in this example. I'm just going to take those back off. Okay, so in order to do the Kappa calculation, I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics and Cross Tabs. Okay, so like with a lot of SPSS, we have our variables over here and we need to move them across to do the analysis. One of them is going to go in the row and one in the column. As far as I know, it doesn't make it any difference which way round you do it. This technique for Kappa is based on two independent raters. Okay, so have a look under statistics and here you will see your kappa. So I'm going to check that. Continue. And one more thing that I like to have a look at are the cells. So you'll see that SPSS defaults to giving you the observed count. And you might have noticed on the other uh, box that there was chi-square there. In a way, Kappa has the same kind of logic because we're looking at comparing observed with expected. We're seeing if observed uh, frequencies or ratings in this case are better than chance. Continue. And that's all I'm going to look at. I'm going to press OK. This is then your output for the Cohen's Kappa from the cross tabs. The box at the top just summarizes what's gone on. Um, not so interesting. We're going to move to look at this cross tabulation. So have a look. Looks a little bit like a chi-square, doesn't it? Um, you can see the grand total there. That's our 30 people who were rated. In here, this example is from looking at their case histories and referral notes. And it's this diagonal left to right that will tell you about the agreement. So we can see here, these were 19 people. They were rated low intensity, recommended by rater one, and low intensity recommended by rater two. Uh, this cell here with the eight, it tells us that eight people were recommended for high intensity intervention by both of the raters. So out of the 30 people or the case files in this case that were rated, you can see that there were three where there was some disagreement. So the final part of the output to look at is your symmetric measures. Here it says measure of agreement kappa 0.769. So that value of 0.769 is your Kappa statistic. You'll be used to looking at p-values. That's given there under this approximate uh, significance, 0 0.000. We change the last zero to a one, so less than 0 0.001. 
um, but you'll find and if you look at my hands out you'll find that people describe this value of kappa according to sort of bands of agreement and I'm just going to go back to my slides to show you what I mean it's here okay so this is the value of kappa and this is the level of agreement by these descriptors so our value of kappa fell here that's 0.7 something and we can say that there was substantial agreement so kappa goes from zero which is agreement equivalent to chance up to one which is perfect agreement i should point out that you can get a kappa value that is less than zero a negative value and that means the agreement is worse than chance hopefully we won't ever see that and i'll show you now how it's um, written up so you can see here inter rates of reliability for the observers showed a substantial level of agreement they report the kappa equals 0.769 p less than 0.001 so that's uh, Cohen's kappa just finally before I say goodbye to SPSS I want to just go back and just talk a little bit about the implications okay so this is the output that we've just looked at so in this case there was substantial agreement there was just a few cases where there was disagreement and in this um, example it may not be too serious if there's disagreement because these services may be connected so if somebody was referred to low intensity but the therapist felt they needed high intensity they could presumably in this example they could be referred on but sometimes um, you know you want to make sure that you're making absolutely the right decision and that other professionals whether that's a researcher or another professional worker well, you need to make sure that you're making the right decisions and that's in, in agreement so the example given to you by the Howard and Kramer textbook on research methods gives the example of people uh, leaving prison you know you might be making decisions in forensic settings for example whether somebody is suitable to go to a lower category of prison or to be released or whether you see some kind of offender is still at risk so there are some scenarios where you'd want to get a higher kappa than than we have here even though it's just three people that it differed by and just finally to say it's not just psychology that find this useful for example you may be um, training radiographers to look at x-rays and you want to make sure that they're in agreement about whether there's a fracture or tumor or whatever they sort of look at so it's useful technique in a lot of applied and research settings so thank you everybody that was kappa time for you now to have a go thank you bye